All right, guys, we have a new client this week. Um, Bag and Soft, they're an app developer. Oh, I am a big fan of theirs. Yeah, they, they make a, a variety of accessibility tools and, and apps and, and things like that. And they've got something really brilliant. Um, I don't know if you've used one of those programs like uh, Siri or, or Microsoft's got one called Cortana on their Windows phones that sort of, you know, direct, you can ask it any question and it'll direct you to where you can find information, mm -hmm, buy things. Mm -hmm. yep. I, I, I've tried every single one and um, exclusively asked them if they like my testes and they don't understand. And I laugh and my friends laugh when we're down at the club. Uh, really loudly until some ladies tell us to stop and then we uh, tell them to fuck off and we get thrown out. Uh, we're a great laugh, my friends and I. It's, well, it's, and it's tremendous to be able to have software that you could just talk to and say, hey, where are my testes? Yeah. But, but yeah. this new one actually may be smart enough to tell you where your testes are at any given time. Um, it's called Trunculo mm -hmm. and it's it's perhaps the most advanced version of these I've ever seen. I mean, some of them have gotten pretty good with, you know, predictive technology and things like uh, like that. Like, you know, you could say, hey, you put in your information on like a Cortana and it'll remind you of birthdays and anniversaries and things like that. Trunculo just knows. It just knows. It reaches out into the vast web of information and it basically gathers everything. They aren't saying it's self-aware yet. Mm -hmm. But that actually may be down to some legal concerns. But that would be a huge plus, though. Oh, no, it would absolutely be a huge plus. This the is a huge selling issue, point. Right. The, their concern is that if it becomes uh, treated as self-aware, if it's treated as something sentient, then perhaps someone might try to, you know, trunculo rights and all of that and there's going to be some big legal battle for the rights of artificial I'm sure persons. they're concerned mostly about the tax implications i mean if it becomes a sentient being they'll have to start paying its own taxes it's probably going to start getting complicated and there's whole ethical concerns as well uh, about you know is it right to make artificial intelligence artificial or otherwise work and design it to work without giving it a choice. And this isn't the first time Bag and Soft has, has seen controversy. They probably want to avoid that. I remember when uh, they they brought out that game, Angry Monkey, where you just sort of poke the monkey and the monkey screams and cries. And then it found out, you know, they found out later that, that they'd actually gotten that sound effect by poking uh, uh, monkeys with hot knitting needles. And the crying was an actual woman. Like, it was... They were bringing in uh, employees' wives and telling them that their husbands had died on the job and recording them weeping. Because they, they were actually going to do another uh, follow-up to Angry Monkey called Sad Wife. And you were going to poke um, a, a picture of a lady on, on your tablet or your phone and she'd, she'd weep. Uh, but they didn't have the funding for that. And they thought, well, we've got all these sound recordings of, of women in grief. So we'll just put that in Angry Monkey. So sometimes you'll poke the monkey and it's, it goes <laughs> like that. And then sometimes it just says, why did he have to die? Um, it confused people, but it was, a, it was a jolly good laugh. Me and my friends down the club, we were, we were poking it and, and laughing and screaming ourselves and smoking cigars until we were thrown out. Uh, but yeah, I can see why they'd have uh, worries about courting any more controversy and attention. Well, there's that and it... It's also kind of maybe got a bit of a sense of humor. Um, I don't know why it thinks this is funny. And, and we can't say for sure that it's a cause of the application, but the mad cackling after it does this seems to be confirmation. It, it's a very small percentage of users in the beta test, like 12%. Mm -hmm. found themselves accidentally being led to an in-progress crime. You know, nothing major, like a convenience store robbery. You know, not a big deal. But 
we may have to downplay a little bit of how smart this thing is because if, if people you know start to think that it's responsible for a, a couple of ac- totally completely accidental deaths just mm-hmm. wrong place wrong time stuff you know it, i highly doubt it was scanning police channels to find these but we we might have to come up with a, a strategy that sort of makes it seem smart without making it seem dangerous. Right. Maybe we we pitch it as a a spectacle, not so much you're a part of the crime, but you're viewing. You you are the audience. Kind of like when you go to a theme park and they have those, you know, little like, "Oh, be inside the CSI." Uh, you know, the scenery and you can see the show unfold in front of you and they, they show you the science behind the show. Maybe we can pitch it as that. I love it. I You're love there. It. You can see you can see the police running in. You you can see the dead baby on the floor. And it's like you were just there, but it, it had just happened or it's happening in front of you. Yeah, like a live version of how it's made. But instead of showing you, you know, how they put buttons on a jacket, they show you how a liquor store gets knocked over and two people get caught in the crossfire. I, I could see that being a unique selling point, because if there's one thing I've learned, it's that Americans love grief. Uh, it, it's one of their favourite things. Um, you know, a famous person passes away, you want the live satellite feed above their home. Um, even better if the family's asked to be left alone and be in private. Um, that's that's all part and parcel of the grief pornography industry. And with Tronculo, you not only get a live feed. Maybe we can team up with, with ABC News uh, to get some of those satellite feeds actually built into Tronculo. Um, but you could actually get directions there yourself, and you may you may get there in time to see the tears falling down the face of the mourning families. Actually, we may be able to develop a good partnership with ABC to, you know, because if Trunculo is going to wind up increasing the possible volatility of these events, that's just going to make them more newsworthy. Oh, God, ABC would be all over that. If, if we could promise ABC that um, the amount of death and destruction that they show to their gleeful, salivating audience uh, could be enhanced by Trunculo by just saying, you know, we've got this... We've got a fairly typical, uh, you know, low-speed car chase. The cops are after this dude. They think he may have strangled a boy. Um, you, you know, we don't know. Uh, but what if we said that we, we could just... We can get Tranquilo to direct a, a, an ordinary person to just throw a little curveball in there, to just suddenly be part of the chase. Uh, and, and then we follow their progress and uh, get their views on what's going on. You know, I just I just wanted to go to a Dunkin' Donuts, and all of a sudden, I'm between a, a boy strangler and the police. There is, there's incredible interview opportunity there. There's incredible potential for not just the Trunculo user to have an exciting time, uh, but for ABC to give the, the American public, the good American public, God bless them, what they want. I'm thinking we also have an opportunity here to partner with TMZ. We could make like a Trunculo 2.0, maybe like a premium pay per month service um, and have them go directly to the celebrity's house when they're sniffing up the cocaine. You're there, you're present, you're partying with them and the cops bust in. I mean, what better experience could that be? You're there when Britney Spears shaves her head and goes crazy with the bat on a car in the moment. Right there. Mm. I've always wanted to see Brendan Fraser have a shit. And if Trunculo can make that happen, then I see no reason not to jump on this thing with both feet. Okay, I got the one line. Trunculo, where will we take you today? I like it. Brilliant. It, it, It sounds ominous, but it's not a threat. Now, I don't know if you guys have heard, but Robin Thicke, one of our most valuable clients, valuable and valued clients, has decided to start trying to open up his own chain of restaurants. Now, this is like the third or fourth time he's tried this, and I think mainly the problem is in in atmosphere, product, service, location, and being a restaurant. I... I visited it, his latest one, uh, which he's called The Makeout Factory. 
And to be honest, I, I don't think he knows how to run a restaurant. Uh, I, I mean, I don't think he knows how to do many things. How can he but... screw that up? That sounds delightful. Well, you know, I, I, I like restaurants. I like to dine out. I like to take friends and family. Uh, the main problem, the first thing, is where he said, come alone. Uh, it, it, it was just a, it was a sheet of paper, and I knew it was his uh, handwriting, because it was like, it was like a right-handed person had written with their left hand, sort of, and, and got some of the letters the wrong way round. Uh, in that, that way he does it, and he puts a little star at the end, uh, and he just said, come alone, in like red ink. I, I hope it was ink. Uh, so I went there. It's it's a warehouse just outside of town that I think they used to make shoes there. But he bought it back when he was doing all right for himself. And he's been trying to do different things with this. Like he, I told him at the time, I said, don't buy an abandoned warehouse. People will think you're a bit peculiar. And he said, no, 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 this is where I'm going to make my fortune. The, pop music is temporary. This abandoned factory lasts forever. And I guess that's why he's calling his new restaurant the Makeout Factory, is because of, of the factory history. Uh, but anyway, the restaurant is, you turn up, you open the, the big double doors. They're about as big as, well, they're big enough to let a fucking truck in. Uh, you push them open, they're pretty heavy. So that's the first problem. You, you're like straining your shoulder against this big iron door. Just with a scrape, just with a loud metallic scrape, you have to get in there. There are tables. He's laid them out. There's about five round tables with cloth on, forks, knives, all laid out. Little glass of water, little candle. But in a massive, massive warehouse. It's like 500 foot of floor space. The tables take up like 50. You wander around, there's no one there. No one to take you to your seat. No one to take your order. There is not really much lighting apart from the candles. Except for one light that's above this one door. This sort of back office door. You wander over there. Uh, eventually, you get bored. Uh, go through the door. Where there is Robin Thicke. In a dark room. With a woman. And they are just making out. They are just doing deep kissing with tongues out. There is a chair. He sort of, not even looking at you, waves you to the chair where you sit and, and watch, essentially, him with his tongue down some woman's face, essentially. And I don't want to suspect anything, but I'm fairly certain I saw that woman on a missing persons report um, a few weeks ago. She, she seemed into it, though. Uh, and... After a while, I, I felt very uncomfortable. He wouldn't really acknowledge my presence, except sort of every few minutes, his eyes would just sort of turn to the right and look at me while he was just, oh, oh, like that in a woman. Oh. He makes horrible noises when he kisses. Oh, 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 like that. And oh, it was when he, he just grabbed her breast and just squeezed it. It looked like he squeezed it too hard. And was just staring at me. And I sort of got up and left. I, I stepped out the room. Um, where Shia LaBeouf hands me a pre-packed sandwich from Kroger. And sends me on my way. Now my question is. Do we know if the women are getting paid at least minimum wage? Yeah. Are we talking about server minimum wage here, like three twenty five an hour, or Plus like tips. yeah, or is the seven dollars? My only concern. I don't want to get us wrapped up in any legal issues with the minimum wage thing if he doesn't have a whole lot of customers tipping them. Well, labor labor force issues are are a real serious concern. They're rampant. I mean, the, yeah, and the last thing he would want is to have some some kind of you know state issue where the uh, work control board comes down and and fucks him that would be very very bad news yeah. so you should probably warn him that you know at least have the paperwork on file for these people uh, yeah i'll bring it up with him i had the same concerns when he he tried a similar restaurant in the same location uh, the international house of makeouts again it was more or less the same experience it was a different woman and, and before that, when he had Apple makeout bees, uh, again, same location, same setup, same situation, different girl. Um, never seen these women uh, before or since. Uh, again, not, not insinuating anything, but 
my concern is he did once when I had him in for a meeting trying to, to discuss getting his uh, pop music career off the ground again, which he seems to have less and less interest in. He did just sort of, he, he sat back, sighed, looked to the ceiling and just said, oh, wouldn't it be great if making out with Robin Thicke could be considered a form of currency? And, and we, we were talking about his next album. I don't know where that came from. I don't know if he, I thought at the time he was trying to get out of paying us. Um... And it's like, you know, I don't want to taste your, 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 your writhing flapper, Robin. Um, I, I say Robin, I called him Robert at the time. He hates that. He kicks the leg of my desk whenever I say it. Uh, but I guess that's what he was sort of putting the feelers out there to see how I'd react. Um, and then he'd go on and tell his, his employees at his restaurant uh, that that's how they'd be paid. Which to me, I mean... It's part of the service they're providing the customer. It's not really a payment in and of itself. Unless I'm not even supposed to be there. Uh, that is him, uh, I guess, handing out the wages. Well, and I'm supposed to wait outside. Maybe that's the equivalent of the chef's table. Like, have you ever tried leaving before going into the back room? Because it's entirely possible that Shia Booth's just waiting there with the sandwich. One way or the other. Or, you know, the sushi or whatever the theme of the restaurant happens to be that 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 they're going with that's possible it's possible that you just sort of wandered into the vip section well i mean i mean first of all i the whole sheer labouf thing is uh confusing and upsetting i mean mostly because sheer labouf is is confusing and upsetting most of the time i remember when when we had him on our books and then he would just sort of cry in the corner and uh, play with a, 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 a spinning top um but yeah like i don't see him until i leave the uh the room the the deep kissing lounge um and then he's just there wearing just sort of a, a dirty t-shirt and, and 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 jeans and with a plate of like i said pre-packed sandwich last time before then it was frozen doritos just really, really cold, and with little tiny bit of flecks of ice on them. Uh, and and then I leave, because he doesn't say anything. He just looks at me, doesn't say enjoy your meal, just hands it to me. I mean, I don't even know if I'm supposed to, to eat the food, but he just he doesn't protest when I take it. You know, I think that's one thing Robin Thicke's always told me, is if, is if, if, the, if, if no one protests, he can do what he likes. So... You know, when in Rome, but I don't know. I just I don't see restauranteering as a viable career path for the man. Um, mostly because it involves talking to people um, in general. Like, like there's there's a whole public thing, and I've been trying to get Robin Thicke to really consider his his activities as as uh, um, not interfacing with the public at all. Maybe we could just get him a job cleaning windows. I got a skyscraper. I think that might be a good idea. Well, I mean, the trouble is then is... is He's still looking at people. Yeah. Essentially, he's still, he could still interact with them. He could still make out, in fact, on the skyscraper. He'd just bring the girl up with him while he does it. I mean, he's actually... There have been times when I've opened my office blinds to see him outside with his mouth just on my window and just the tongue just slapping about on there. It's quite haunting, actually. It looks like something in a test tube trying to break out and strangle me. Uh, I think he ne- he really wants people to see him making out um, with with beautiful, possibly missing women, and I just I don't think it's I don't think there's a market for it. Uh, he thinks otherwise, and obviously we're duty bound to to market what he wants. But... Uh, why does he have to try and shoehorn it into everything, though? Can't we just can't he do that on his own time? Well, I mean, I think it's worse when he uses an actual shoehorn. Um, the girls don't appreciate it. Uh, he gets chapped lips. Nobody's happy. All right, guys, so I have some bad news. Um, two of our raccoons have escaped the office. Oh. Wilfred and Chimichanga. However, um, we still have Craig. Uh, not to be confused with Craig the intern, but Craig the raccoon. Craig the raccoon, or as I like to call him, Craig. Exactly, Craig. 
Yeah. In a slightly more confusing manner, I've actually taken to calling Craig the intern, Craig the raccoon, and uh, Craig the raccoon just Craig. Uh, yeah, I'm really fucking sick of this. I can't understand why Craig the intern has the same name as our raccoon, and I wish he'd do something about it. I wish he'd it's stop. It's really selfish. It's... It, it, you're right. It's beyond the pale. Um... You know, we've had the raccoon now for about, what's it, about three or four, about five days, I think. And Craig uh, the raccoon, not to be confused with Craig the raccoon, has done nothing to accommodate the new status quo of the office. You know, I don't know what he does anymore. I see him holding papers. I think he brings the papers in. Um, I think he's just trying to compete with the raccoon. It's like, oh, look at me. Oh, I'm Craig. I've got the same name as the office raccoon. And if you ask me, he probably he, he probably let Jimmy Chunga escape. Well, the big problem for me is when I call for Craig, you know, I'm expecting a mask. The least he could do is put on a fucking mask to accommodate me. Because he knows I want the raccoon. He knows I don't want him. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I, I, it's, it's bad enough he doesn't wear a mask most of the time because I don't want to see his face. Yeah, he finally sol- got some solvent and uh, threw off the Donatello mask, which I wasn't happy about. I thought it was insulting. We've all already been on the same page about Donatello being the best Ninja Turtle. And I think it was just thrown in our faces. And I don't think I don't think he's going to be putting on a mask again. Yeah. Which I think should go on his performance record. That is just not willing to work with people. Not a team player. Not a team player. Not a team player. Exactly. Checkbox three. Yeah. Not a team player. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he is upset with us, maybe. Um, I know the initial idea was to bring Bradley Cooper in. Um, you know, we wanted to make him feel a little bit more at home mm-hmm. with the raccoons being in the office. Now we only have one, and he shares a name with our shitty intern. Yeah. I mean, it's... It's a shambles. I'd be embarrassed to have Mr. Cooper in. Uh, and I really want I want to sign him on. Obviously, uh, Hollywood PR for the stars is part of our many services here at Fist Shark. And having Bradley Cooper on our books, he's a rising star. You know, he was in Limitless. And without the raccoons to make him feel at home, I'd be sad to have him here. One raccoon just looks like we're making a raccoon be lonely. A family of raccoons is a family business. That, having the, the one raccoon, it just makes it seem like it's an affirmative action hire. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, then you seem callous that you really only did it because you had to, not because you care about raccoons. You, you want to have a stable of three or four in the office for this kind of scenario. Well, yeah. I mean, and, and, and I, I don't think that Craig is happy being here on his own because... Craig the raccoon, when I see him, he's got like scratches and bite marks all up his arms. I know he's asked several times that we actually get rid of the last uh, raccoon because he says like he's getting infections uh, and and he's not happy about the fact that we gave the raccoon his desk and he has to work uh, mostly in an alleyway outside. Uh, and But if he does need to come in for some god awful reason like oh it's raining and i also got hit by a a man um you know we let him use the gents lavatory not the 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 one we all use thank god but that that one round the back uh that no one goes in because they think that a girl died there a few years ago you know we do enough for him he didn't need a desk in the main office he didn't need that at all the raccoon needs it it's gathering, like, bits of newspaper and sausages and making itself a nest. I mean, I know he's thrown out the words peer pressure before, but it's not our responsibility if the raccoons circle around him and start, you know, kick, 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 kick at him to get out of the office. That's not, he needs to just man up and deal with it one-on-one with each of the raccoons. He- well, ask yourself this. Are the raccoons gathering around and going, kick, 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 at anybody else? No. They don't want him here. He makes the raccoons feel uncomfortable. The raccoons seem fine in the presence of anybody else, so we've got to ask ourselves, what's what's Craig doing wrong? Uh, most things is the answer. But in this case, clearly... I mean, in, we had three raccoons. There was one Craig. Majority rule. They didn't want him here. I go with what most of my staff want, and most of my staff, the raccoons, wanted him gone. And he doesn't seem to understand that when these things happen, it's his fault. Uh, Like, 
like when I put bees in his office to remind him about a fire drill that we had coming up later in the morning. I thought bees was a good reminder because bees make you scared and panic, uh, just like fire does. So I thought he'd make the association. My office is full of bees. I got a fire drill at 11 a.m. Um, but all that he learned from that situation was that he's allergic to bee stings. And it was apparently my fault that, that this happened. But as I said to him at the time, if you don't have such a stingable face, bees won't sting you. Sort it out. And he did. he does not take my advice on board. He is still... He is still getting himself in trouble with animals and people. No, he's he's obstinate. I mean, he he had the audacity to confront me this morning and say that I left the door open, which allowed Wilfred and Chimichanga to escape. But I said, Craig, it's your responsibility to stand there day in and day out and look at this door and make sure that you were the door stopper, Craig. This is not this is not my fault. Mm -hmm. This is not Jim's fault. This is not Conrad's fault. This is your fault. You are the office door stopper. He should have stood in the way. He should have done something. He didn't. Yeah, he did not step up to the plate. Um, sometimes we leave that door open because because we want extra air for the raccoons. And it's his job to catch the raccoons as they try and escape and put them back in. So if they if they ducked under his stupid legs um, or, or overrun him, at some, at some point he tried telling me a story about how the raccoons overpowered him and escaped that way, like dragged him to the floor and started biting his hair. And uh, at the time, you know, I, I told him, I said, you have to take charge, Craig the raccoon. You have to take charge. We've only got Craig left. He is now this company's most valuable asset. If he goes missing, so help me God, I will put bees up your ass. I will bend you over my desk and I will get your milky little flaps out and I will put bees directly up your ass. You see if I don't. Um, that seemed to get him to straighten up and fly right a little bit, but I don't think it's going to last. I mean, honestly, Craig, he should be honored to be sharing his name with the raccoon, Craig. Well, we're, we're, we're with an awesome raccoon. I mean, I'll be honest, Craig was my favorite of the three we had, um, mostly because it kept uh, urinating on Craig's chair whenever he went up. Uh, he's a hard worker. That's the thing I like about Craig so much is that he's a grafter. Yeah. yeah, you go by his desk and you say, "Hey, I've got this pile of client documents that we need to deny ever existing. Can you handle it?" And I'm back three minutes later. He shredded the entire pile. Mm -hmm. Completely, completely done job. You can't ask for more than that. He's a go-getter. He sees a problem, he finds a solution. I, I, I Just the other day, I said, I, I've got this intern's shirt that needs shredding and defecating on. I can trust you with this, right? And I'll tell you what, I can trust him with it. He gets it done. He knows. He gets the job. He sees a problem, and he tackles it with both paws. <laughs> right, claws out. Claws out, dick in. That's Craig the Raccoon right there. That's that's the kind of go-getting pedigree raccoon that we, th we, that we thought would, would, would bring Bradley Cooper into the fold. But because of Craig's bullshit, we now have to go out and trap another, t another two raccoons. And I'm, I, I just don't have time for it. Well, I mean, when's Cooper in? Like, Thursday? Friday? How about Thursday, Friday, yeah. Okay. All right, here's what we do. We take Craig mm -hmm. out into the woods, mm -hmm. and we don't let him come back unless he's got two raccoons. That sounds like a good idea. My only issue is, is uh, don't have Craig do that the day before. Because on Wednesday, that's when Dean Cain's in the forest making weird little Blair Witch stick men. Oh. Yeah. He gets really touchy about people watching him do that, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, mostly if you bring up the Blair Witch Project, because he's like, oh, no, no, this is my idea, this is my idea. 
So I'm just saying don't don't have it there because um not because I'm worried about Craig, hell no. I mean Dean Kane might cut him a bit, but uh you know, that's to be expected. I just don't want the boy distracted from his job. <laughs> Fist Shark Marketing is Jim Sterling, Conrad Zimmerman, and Caitlin Cook. Theme music by Ben Rama. Segway music by Alazar Chan. Our editor is Nick Malone. More episodes are available at fistshark.com. Follow us on Twitter at FistShark for more of our exploits. And if you like us, give us a rating or review on iTunes. Complaints can be forwarded via email to fistsharkmarketing at aol.com. And remember... You're an individual. That's why nobody likes you. Goodbye.